diabetes, all those things put together, hearing loss, it is right up there. And do you know this? It's impossible to have a conversation when you're talking all the time. Do you know that? See that? Husbands, see that to your wives. It's impossible to have a conversation with someone who's talking all the time. <laughs> now wives, hit them back. You don't have to do it. No. You know, part of being a Christian is not just about praying to God. It's not just about sending up to God what we think needs doing or we think should be done. But it's about spending time listening for his voice. Listening for his still, small whisper as he wants to speak and guide to us. We want to be like those people on the Emmaus Road who, who journeyed through life, who were going through life, and they didn't realize it, but Jesus was amongst them, teaching them things. From God's word. He was amongst them, encouraging them, encouraging them, lifting them, them up. We want to be like Samuel, who hears God's voice when he's calling, saying, Samuel, Samuel. And we were awake and alive to the fact that God has something for us. Hearing the voice of God, I, I came across this quote and I thought it was good. Hearing the voice of God is not about mastering a skill, but following the master. Hearing the voice of God is not about mastering a skill, you know, like a formula. If we get this condition right, if we get these circumstances right, then I'm going to hear the voice of God, praise God. But actually it's about following the master. It's about journeying with him, journeying with him every day of your life. You know, every time you get up and you think, oh God, I've got this, this, this and this to deal with today, but will you help me? And as you open up God's word, as you spend time listening to him, in the moments of silence, he wants to speak back to us. To help us, to encourage us, to lift us up. I want us to turn to 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 12. Just another story in the Bible where God speaks to um, the prophet Elijah, actually, in an unconventional way, in a way that we wouldn't think God would speak to his people. It's a story that some of you will be familiar with, a story when um, the prophet Elijah has just had the biggest win of his life. You know, it's bigger than Wales winning the World Cup. It is bigger than Tottenham getting the treble this season. Because he's just had, on Mount Carmel, all the prophets of Baal have just been wiped out with one fell swoop. And he, he, he's surely onto a good thing. Not, not just that, but, you know, he's praying. He prayed for, uh, for three years of drought to come to an end. And it happened. Can you imagine your prayers? Being answered like that, Lord, end the rain in Wales, please. Send the good weather. Oh, maybe we don't want that to happen now it's winter time. But can you imagine being in that place where things have gone so well for you? Your prayers have been answered. But then Elijah goes into a different mode because he realized, although some incredible things have happened, 
He realizes that some of his prayers haven't come to fulfillment because Ahab and Jezebel haven't repented. And in fact, they've issued death threats against Elijah. And Elijah says this, having had that great, incredible high of those miracles taking place. Now he's at the place of disappointment and he says, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. And then this is what 1 Kings 19 says, that, says to us. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Anyone ever feel like that? I'm the only one left. I'm the only one praying. I'm the only one doing this. I'm the only one. He's having a big pity party, basically, okay? The Lord said this to Elijah. Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael, king of Aram. Also, anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, Son of Shaphat from uh, Abel, Me Meholah, to succeed you as prophet. Elijah, I want to say, was a guy who was used to the dramatic in his life. He was used to the fanfare. He was used to God breaking out in incredible ways. For him in the land of Israel, he was used to God doing the, the, the highlights. He was used to God doing the incredible things. And as he goes to this mountain, he's expecting something similar. He goes to the mountain and there's, there's a, an earthquake, there's shaking, but God isn't in the shaking. He goes on the mountain and there's fire, but he realizes that God is not in the fire. He, he's on the mountain and there's a great wind that comes by, but he's not in the wind. You see, all those things are the way that God spoke to Moses many years ago. And Elijah, knowing that Moses had been spoke to in that way, I think he was probably expecting something similar to happen. But you know what? God didn't speak to him as he did in the past, but he chose a new method to do it. He chose to speak to a gentle whisper. Not too long ago, back in the summer, Dylan and I, we went to watch a film at the cinema, and it was a Mission Impossible film. And we were in Bristol, and we were down at the cinema there, it was one of these pretty high-tech cinemas. And if you know the Mission Impossible sort of story, it's, it, there's a lot of sounds, there's a lot of stunts, there's lots of explosions, there's this going on, it moves fast from this train crash to this fight scene to that. And Dylan and I, because I was a little bit of a cheapskate, I got front seats that were a little bit discounted, and we sat near the front of the cinema. And as we were sat at the front of the cinema, we had to lift our heads up quite high to see this great screen that was about probably the length of that wall, wall over there. And of course, we pick up every single sound and decibel that comes from the speakers. And it's blaring at you. You see Tom Cruise's every little wrinkle, if he's got any. It's so close on the big screen. You see every, you pick up every little sound and every little movement on the Ultra 8K TV in front of us. You get everything. And we go out there just absolutely blown away and I'm a little bit on edge shaking. Because I don't know, I've calmed down after all that excitement. And Dylan turns to me and he says, 
That was a bit of a disappointment, wasn't it? <laughs> and you know what? He was right. It was so loud. It was so overpowering. I just went out there with a headache. I thought, I'm turning 35 this year. I must be getting old. Because I'm no longer enjoying this sort of loud kind of experience where you can see everything in colour and HD. And do you know what? I think sometimes we would love God to speak to us in HD. We would love God to boom his voice down from heaven and be crystal clear to us. We would love God to get on that cinema screen and say, Thus saith the Lord to Gemma. Thus saith the Lord to Chris, to Angie, to people to in our lives. But do you know what? If we're expecting God to do that, I think we're going to be terribly disappointed. Because scripture teaches us that more often than not, God's voice comes to us as a gentle whisper. As a still, small voice. The potentate of time, creator of the rolling spheres, ineffably sublime, chooses to whisper in our ear far more than he chooses to shout to us from a platform. I know someone who spent many years in the military and he spent so many years uh, around the sort of machinery and on the ranges and in gunfire that um, his hearing was actually going. And one time he had to go through, as army personnel have to do, is they have to go for hearing tests to see if their hearing is still up to what they need, to, the standard it needs to be. And the, the test that he had to go through was, uh, he had to put headphones on and he had to press a button in his hand every time a beep came in his ear. So he'd be sitting there and a beep would come and he was meant to press a button to say that he'd heard his beep and they'd keep his score to see how he got on and if he passed and he had a certain score he'd be okay to go on. But he actually told me, he said, Rob, I'm as deaf as a doorpost. So what I do is press the button every now and again, and again just to register a score. And so far in my career, it's worked and I'm still, and they haven't thrown me out yet. And you know, I wonder if as Christians, we sometimes do that in the sense of hearing from God. We're not quite sure how we're to go about it, so we just guess. So we just press the button. So, so we just think, well, maybe it's God, maybe it's not. But I think God wants to give us hearing so that we can hear his still small whisper. So that we can sense his guiding in our life. So, so that we can sense that actually and hear that he is with us. God from us. You see, we've got to get to understand this, that God is in the small stuff of our life. When God whispers, it means this, that he has to be close by. Because God doesn't shout, people from a distance shout, but God can whisper because he's close by. God can whisper to you and me because he doesn't need to shout. When God can talk to you anywhere, but he'll often share the greatest insights for your life and for mine when you're alone with him. I want to say to you today, just to help you hear, hear God's voice more in your life is this. Firstly, that God often shows up in the ordinary things of life. Very often, folks, we need to make sure that we get alone by ourselves. We need to spend time in silence and solitude so that we can hear his voice. Do you know I came across this fact that an average person gets between 50 and 100 emails or texts every day. And if that's all we're going to hear in a day, folks, and not God's voice, no wonder our lives are going to be so screwed up and messed up, and we're going to find following God hard. But we need to get to the quiet place where we can hear what he has to, to say. One old hymn writer put it like this, Shut in with God in a secret place, there in the Spirit beholding his face. Gaining more power to run this race. Oh, I long to be shut in with God. We live in perpetual busyness, noise and distraction. But we need little solitudes that will punctuate our day. 
Little solitudes when no one else is up in the house. Little solitudes when we're on our way to work. Little solitudes when we're getting ready for our day. Little solitudes maybe when you're preparing a meal for your family. Little solitudes as you're going for a walk. Maybe you're walking to the shops where you turn the phone off and you say, Hey God, it would just be great to spend some time with you today. Turn these in-between times in your life, in your day, into small oasis. Into a small oasis where you're with God. Do you know what? I think God will start to talk to us. I can remember one guy, his name was Steve. He got baptized here a few years ago. And he wasn't a Christian, but his wife had been praying for him for many years. And he, I can remember him saying to me that uh, in the shower, he would always have these deep questions that would come to him. It wouldn't happen anywhere else. But in the shower, as he was washing uh, uh, to get ready for the day, he, he would start to have these questions pop into his mind and he, he would start to, to respond to them and asking things, well, is this right? Is not that right? And he realised that in those moments, God was speaking to him. And God was drawing him. And God was putting something in his life, revealing himself to him through those conversations that he was having. Just an oasis in the middle of his day. Not just as God show up in the ordinary things of life that he want to speak to you in those moments, but also this, that the right voices in our life brings the right choices. The right voices in our life will bring the right choices. You show me your friends and I'll show you your future, is the famous quote. We've got to make sure that we allow people who have got godly character to speak into our lives. Not just any Tom, Dick or Harry. People who have walked the walk and ran the race. Who have lived through trials and tribulations and have come through those times. We need to be guided by those people rather than just anyone who wants to speak into our circumstance. In the Old Testament is the story of the, the King Saul. And King Saul started off really well, really well when he was led by the prophet Samuel. But what happened, him and Samuel had a few tiffs, they had a few ding-dongs because Samuel confronted him on some issues in his life. And Saul basically got rid of Samuel the prophet and instead it says that he took advice from the witch of Endor. The witch of Endor began speaking into his life and he got into rebellion, he got into witchcraft. And from that point of point on, Samuel was no long, Saul sorry, was no longer the great man of God that he once started off in life. The voices that you allow to speak into your life will determine how far you go in your Christian experience. Godly voices on your way to work. You know what, you can put on something positive on your way to work or, or you can listen to the negative news one more time. You, you can put on something positive in your quiet time in around your house that will lift you up, that will encourage you in your faith, or you can listen to something that will drag you down and do you no good at all. You and I don't need spiritual people who are asleep in our lives. You know, some people, spiritually speaking, folks, they're asleep. Spiritually speaking, there's nothing going on. And yet we often give these people so much access so much access to speak and to guide us, but actually we need to have the right voices in our life. I said it a couple of weeks ago about how Adam and Eve, when they listened to the voice of God in the Garden of Eden, all went well for them. They walked and they journeyed with God. But as soon as they listened to the voice of the serpent, what happened? Doubt started coming in. Doubt started coming in saying, did God really mean that? Can we eat from this tree? It was the wrong voice that they started listening to. Not just does God show up in the ordinary and want to speak to you in the ordinary. Not just do we need right voices in our life that will bring right choices. But also this, that there is a voice that speaks to us in the valley. Going back a couple of weeks ago, that couple on the Emmaus Road, they were in a valley experience in their life. They were in a place where they lost everything. Jesus, their saviour, their lord, their, their rabbi, their teacher had been killed. But what happened? Jesus came along and spoke to them in that valley and lifted them up from it. Saul and Eli in that place 
where Saul, the young boy, was sorry, Samuel, the young boy, was asleep, and Eli came along and said, "Say, speak, Lord." Next time the voice comes, say, "Speak, Lord, your servant is is listening." In that time, they were in a dark place for Israel. The voice of God hadn't been heard for years and years and years. The 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 the, the voice of God in the land had completely gone gone out. Sin was ravaging everything. It was a dark place, it was a valley. But in those moments of valley, folks, God can speak into them. In those moments of difficulty and doubt and worry, God's voice can speak all the louder. One last thing I wanted to say from this story that we read. If we go back to it, it says a little bit earlier on, it says this, that the Lord is about to pass by. The Lord is about to pass by. You go on to the New Testament, and in Mark it says something very, very similar when the disciples are in a boat. They're in a boat, and a storm has come, and they, 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 they're worried. The storm has come, and it says this, Jesus came to them walking on the water, and he was passing by. Do you know what? I want to say to you this morning, in your life, and in mind that God is passing by. And we can either call out to him for strength, for hope, to put our trust and our life in him, or do you know what will happen? God will just continue to go by. The amazing thing about God is that he doesn't force himself on your life. He doesn't come in and say, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. But for those who recognize God is passing by and call out to him, as the disciples did on that lake when they were in a mess, and call out to him and say, God, it's not good enough for you just to pass by and for someone else to experience the joy of knowing you. But I want to know you for myself. I don't want you to pass me by. Hey, I don't want you to pass my family by. I don't want you to pass, God, this church by. Because he's listening for our call and he's waiting for us to say, yeah, I'm ready and I want you and I'm in business with you. I've had enough of just playing the Christian scene. I've had enough of just doing, being lukewarm. I've had enough of just maybe living my life casually for God. But for those who say, God, don't just pass us by, but we need you. I need you in my family. I need you in my workplace. I want to say as a pastor here this morning, we need God in our church more than ever. God, please, don't pass us by. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you're still a God who speaks. You're still a God who wants to draw near to us this morning. And for those who want to keep God at arm's length, do you know what, folks? That's where he'll stay. But for those who want him to draw near to God, God says, I'll draw near to you too. But we have to take the first step. Lord, I'm just asking that this morning that as a group of believers, we will be people who say, God, don't just pass me by. God, don't just pass me by and go on to the person down the road who road who's really desperate for you. But stop with me. Because I need you. Don't just pass me by and don't let your voice just bounce off my heart and go back to you like a boomerang. But let your voice come into my situation because I need to hear from you. Lord, let your voice come and speak to each and every one of us here this morning. I'm just asking you, Lord, as maybe we distill our hearts, that you would come and we would call out to you.